can be the best. You can be the king Kong banging on your chest. All right, uh, so I'm Ryan X. Charles, co-founder and CEO of yours, and in light of all of the uh, sort of uh, events for those of us immersed in the industry, I decided to actually sort of break up my talk into two parts. So I'm going to give my sort of uh, normal talk about what is Money Button, what is my company, and all that stuff. But I'm actually going to start with uh, just a bit of information and perspective about Bitcoin SV, because we decided actually to use uh, Bitcoin SV uh, as of about uh, eight, nine days ago, something like that. So. A lot of stuff happened in a very short period of time. Uh, but before I go into that, I'm just going to give you a very quick overview of Money Button before going into details later. So this is just a nice little preview of what is Money Button. Money Button is like the Facebook Like button, but it's money. So the idea is that you can easily configure and install this Payments button on any website or app in almost no time at all, one minute. You can copy and paste the code and, and paste it into a web page. And it's very easy for users to make payments with it. So we are making payments as easy as the Facebook Like button. That's the, the idea of this. Um, but now let me, uh, let me go into basically why Bitcoin SV. Why did we decide to, to do this? And I'm going to start with just a brief overview of, of sort of my company and personal background. I've been involved in Bitcoin since 2011. Uh, my company actually traces its origins back to about late 2015, so actually about three years ago, uh, when I started working on this idea. And the idea was basically to use Bitcoin to solve problems in social media. We wanted to empower content creators from platforms like YouTube, uh, things like that, to earn more money for their content by leveraging Bitcoin payments. Uh, we thought that, gosh, a lot of people have problems monetizing their content with ads. And Bitcoin creates just a giant world of possibilities for people to monetize content other than ads. Uh, so that was sort of the idea. And that is where yours.org came from and where ultimately Money Button came from. Uh, but I want to start with more of the, the, the sort of the technical background. So you know, why did we use the technology that we use? Uh, first of all, briefly, Bitcoin as, a, as an idea and, a, and way back in the day, Bitcoin Core as, a, uh, as, a, as an actual technology, uh, solves a bunch of problems. You can basically just have internet money. You can send money peer-to-peer -peer over the internet with no trusted third party. The payments are basically instant, basically free, can't be reversed, blocked, frozen, inflated away, all those types of things. So it's wonderful. It's exactly what we needed. We needed internet money. Now, what happened in, so we started in sort of late 2015 as, as just an open source project. By early 2016, uh, it started to become clear that uh, there was going to be a, a scaling issue with Bitcoin. The fees on Bitcoin went increased from about zero cents to about five cents uh, per transaction. And five cents was high enough that it started to sort of threaten the idea that we were working on. We needed lower fees than five cents. Uh, so at the time, it seemed like the right solution to this was going to be Lightning Network. Uh, so we basically researched and developed, the, you know, uh, not the Lightning Network specifically, but we read all their papers basically and made our own form of this. And when I say we, I'm talking about myself and my former co-founder, Clemens Lay, who I think many of the people here uh, know who he is. Uh, so we, we researched how to do a second layer on Bitcoin. And we actually developed this. In fact, we actually had ours working before uh, Lightning Network. We actually launched on mainnet Bitcoin in early 2017, so a little less than two years ago now, uh, because we weren't on SegWit, for those of you who remember the history, that SegWit didn't actually launch until somewhere around uh, the middle of 2017. So ours actually worked without SegWit, and we had uh, it working on mainnet before uh, the Lightning Network. The problem was that by that time, fees on Bitcoin had actually gotten so absurdly high that even with Lightning, uh, uh, even with Lightning Network or our version of it, uh, it was still too expensive. Fees on Bitcoin were about $5. Uh, by early 2017. And $5 means well, even opening a channel has, you have to do about three on-chain transactions, so that's $15. And that basically would be the cost of onboarding a user. And if you know anything about the social media world, $15 just to onboard a user is a completely unacceptable price. I mean, that's, there's no way us or the users could afford that. Um, so we actually switched to Litecoin. Uh, the reason why we switched to Litecoin was at the time, Litecoin had lower fees, but was almost exactly the same technically as Bitcoin. 
So that's how we ended up on Litecoin. And we we're on Litecoin from sort of early to mid 2017. And the problem with Litecoin uh, was basically that the fees weren't low enough for us to actually get rid of payment channels. We still had to use all the payment channel technology. And what started to become clear operating on Litecoin was that actually there were a lot of usability cha challenges with payment channels that I now believe are impossible to solve. That requirements like in order to receive a payment, the user has to be online uh, is basically a no-go for a social network. I mean, the user just isn't going to be online hardly ever. In fact, we actually had the technology and the product developed well enough that we could start to measure things. And one of the interesting things we measured was, uh, and this was about probably July or so of 2017, uh, we had everything working in a full version of, of yours.org working with payment channels on Litecoin. And we were able to measure the success of payments. And the success of payments on the platform was about 50%. That is to say, when you try to give somebody money, there is a 50% probability that it will work. And once again, if you swallow all these other challenges with Lightning Network, uh, that's unacceptable. You can't have a payment system where there's only a 50% probability that it will work. Uh, so we're like, this is it's a serious issue. Like, it, it was, I, I was like really stressed out, to be honest, at the time. Like, it was unclear that this was even going to be something we could solve. And then Bitcoin Cash launched in August of 2017. So we were like, this is amazing, because we immediately ran tests, and we were able to do very low cost. In fact, at the time, you could even do free transactions on Bitcoin Cash. Uh, we knew free wasn't going to last forever, but you could reliably do transactions for less than one cent. We're like, oh my gosh, this solves the problem we needed to solve. We have all the properties of Bitcoin that we, that we desire, uh, and without having to do the payment channel stuff. So what we decided to do was pivot our product and technology to use Bitcoin Cash, on-chain Bitcoin Cash transactions. And we were the, actually the first app uh, to do this. So there were a number of exchanges and wallets that adopted Bitcoin Cash, but we were actually the first app you know, that wasn't an exchange or a wallet to actually adopt Bitcoin Cash. And we launched our new version of the product about 25 days into the existence of Bitcoin Cash. Um, so that worked out quite well for, for a long time. Uh, until recently when we started having this, uh, you know, sort of turmoil within the Bitcoin Cash community. And so we, we've ultimately ended up deciding to go with uh, Bitcoin SV uh, in light of all the recent events. So I'll, I'll sort of try and explain that. Uh, before I get into Bitcoin SV, I'll just do a brief overview of comparison. So uh, between these different sort of, the, uh, sort of options we have. And if people have questions later about, obviously there's a whole other world of cryptocurrency which is not on this chart here, but I'd be happy to answer questions later if anybody wants to ask about the other ones. Um, but Bitcoin Core, in a nutshell, uh, it's not just the fees, it's the wildly unpredictable economics of, of Bitcoin. It's not just that fees are expensive, it's that fees vary wildly between like a few cents and $60, which is, I mean, you can't even plan around this, right? So you have no idea at any moment the fees could suddenly shoot up to $60 and whatever it is that you're doing on the, on the, on the platform just might not function anymore, as a, a lot of people actually experience. Bitcoin Cash, um, you know, it, and I, oh, I, I, look, I, I guess I have to call it that now. I was, calling every, I was calling it Bitcoin ABC and Bitcoin SV, but I think the exchanges have decided for us that this is called Bitcoin Cash now. Um, Bitcoin Cash is, is fine right now when it comes to low fees, but their direction is a bit problematic. So I'm worried about the experimentation with the protocol. We don't need, from a business perspective, we don't need anything different about the protocol. The protocol is fine. Uh, I'm worried, though, that we're going to go in a direction where the protocol is basically uh, sort of changes from out, out from under us, which is actually something that's happening right now. So we're going with Bitcoin SV. Uh, before I try to explain all of that reasoning, though, I want to cover a concept that I think is true and seems to be something that either other people don't believe it or have never thought about it. But actually, you can solve, there are a lot of issues, you, can, you could write down a list of issues you may or you know, have with Bitcoin. You can actually solve all of the problems, I think, using Bitcoin. And it's such a simple idea that it, it's almost unclear what I'm even saying, so I'll try and explain it quickly. Um, imagine a problem like ZeroConf. How do you do instant transactions with Bitcoin? We all know that, uh, well, okay, until a transaction is actually confirmed in a block, it might be double spent. So how do you deal with this? I mean, surely we need to improve the protocol, right? Surely we need to add new features or something and do something new with the protocol. I don't think so. I think that once you've solved the problem of money, 
you can use money to solve all these problems. So I'll give you several different ways you can solve zero conf. In a nutshell, what you really want to do is you adopt a business perspective and you think that we need to lower fraud enough that the benefits of payments outweigh the costs. That's it. The way you can do this is with things like, well, you could imagine, first of all, operating as a merchant, you could simply look at the information you have from the network and from the environment to do Bayesian probability theory to come up with a probability of fraud for any given payment. You could do this yourself, or you could even pay a company to do it for you. You could start a business around this, actually, where you do things like accumulate information about the network and users and stuff like that, provide this information for a fee paid in Bitcoin to merchants uh, to allow them to make a decision about the probability of fraud, or better yet, you could provide, say, insurance. You compute the probability yourself, and then what you do is you actually guarantee a payment, uh, you know, the, uh, an instant transaction, for a fee of insurance. So that way the merchant can reliably accept zero conf. So if you understand the idea, you literally solve all the other problems by creating businesses that use Bitcoin as money. When you create an insurance company that solves zero conf, what you do is you accept Bitcoin for payment for the insurance, and when you pay out, you pay out with Bitcoin. So you actually can solve all these problems with Bitcoin. Once you have money, you don't need to go changing money itself to solve every problem. You can just leverage money to solve all these other problems. Uh, and I believe every other problem can be solved that way as well. So when you understand this, what I'm going to say next will make a whole lot of sense. Basically, Bitcoin SV is Bitcoin. Bitcoin SV is the original protocol. I believe the protocol was a solved problem on day one. Uh, and as Inchain likes to say, I won't speak. Thank you. As, as you guys have been saying recently, you know, uh, uh, you know, protocol version 0 0.1 was simply correct. There wasn't anything else to do other than to scale it and to get adoption. Because when you realize that you can just solve all the problems with Bitcoin using Bitcoin, you don't need to change the protocol. You need to look sort of at the, uh, above that and, and basically figure out how to create real businesses that create value for people and you can leverage Bitcoin for that. Um, okay, so I'm, I'm quickly blowing through my time here, so I'll move on to the next uh, part of my talk, which is basically uh, about my company, yours.org and Money Button. So we are now focused on Money Button. Uh, and Money Button is really just taking the technology of yours.org, which is a social network, and making it available to anybody, anywhere, uh, to, to integrate payments into uh, social media or really any type of app at all. So Money Button is an API and a UI UX layer for the blockchain. And I'm showing you a little snippet of code where basically that's sort of how it looks when you use it. Uh, and you can do things like, first of all, you can pay to a user or an address. Uh, so we have things like a built-in auth system I'll get to in, in a second. You can do things like actually uh, not just pay, not just make a single payment, so this isn't just like a way to accept payments. Uh, you can pay to other users, and you can pay to multiple users at the same time. So you can actually really, really build yours.org if you wanted to, or anything like that using this technology. It's not just about accepting payments, it's about integrating payments in any way that you want to into apps. Uh, we support op return, so you can easily put data on the blockchain using Money Button. We support scripts. Currently we support any output script, so anything that's valid on Bitcoin SV, uh, you can plug into your into the money button and do whatever type of output script you want to. Uh, you can customize the appearance of it a little bit. We support custom labels. The button is branded very much on purpose, so we don't let you customize just anything, but you can change the label. Uh, we support every currency, so we let you denominate things in any cryptocurrency or any fiat currency. So even though under the hood everything is Bitcoin SV. Uh, we recognize that from an end user perspective, you're probably most familiar with whatever your local fiat currency is. So the user or the consumer can actually display things in their price. So for instance, when you travel to a new country, for those of us like who aren't from the UK and we visit the UK, it would be convenient if when you look at a menu, you see prices in whatever currency you're familiar with rather than pounds. And so we adopt that idea in Money Button that the end user sees prices in the currency they're familiar with, uh, not necessarily a currency that the merchant picks. The merchant, however, can also choose prices in whatever price they prefer. So you, if you live in the UK and you're a UK a, a merchant, you can denominate prices in, in pounds and the user will see whatever currency uh, from whatever country or, you know, that they prefer. 
Um, we do callbacks so you can respond to payments. So when, it, when the user makes a successful payment, you can respond to, the, to it. So you can do things like paywalls or any sort of advanced feature. Uh, you could even, uh, although we're, this isn't really our target uh, uh, market, you could use it as a generic payment system to actually do things like ship products to people and things like that uh, in response to the payments. We also have an integrated auth system. So this is kind of sort of closes the loop of how everything works. When, when, once you have an integrated auth system, you can do things like track payments. So the user can do things like purchase an article and then come back later and the article they purchased is still there uh, because you can track that by using the auth system. Uh, and we have server-side webhooks as well. So client-side, server-side. Uh, server-side is a little bit more difficult for the, the developer to implement. However, it is, it is more secure. Um, okay, so in a nutshell, what is Money Button? Uh, it is a, uh, it's an easy API and a UI UX layer. So the API for developers, it's, we're trying to make that as easy as possible, and we're trying to make the actual user experience for the end user as easy as possible as well. We support uh, basically, not all, but many of, advanced, uh, of the advanced blockchain features, and ultimately we'll, we'll uh, target to support actually every advanced feature of Bitcoin SB will be integrated into Money Button. Uh, and it's an integrated auth system with currency conversion. So we basically solve a suite of related problems for you uh, for basically primarily building social media apps, but you could imagine all sorts of other applications of this as well. Uh, we have a number of different integrations. We're, we're sort of, uh, uh, so right now we support React.js, HTML, pure JavaScript. We'll be creating a WordPress plugin soon, uh, as well as whatever other integrations basically our customers demand from us, we'll, we'll do them uh, uh, in order. Uh, but right now, because it's JavaScript, it already works with almost any type of platform you can, you can imagine already. Um, it's completely free. So we're going to try to maintain this for as long as possible. We have all sorts of other ways we can monetize Money Button without charging for the transactions themselves. The theory here is that we aren't a payment processor. The blockchain is actually the payment processor. You pay miners for the transaction fees, and the transaction fees are almost zero. So they're the ones processing the transactions, not us. We create other sorts of value that we can charge for. And I guess I won't explain everything, but you'll see uh, as early as probably the next one or two weeks, we're going to roll out the first monetization uh, sort of a strategy. So you'll see what that is when we, when we actually announce that. But there are lots of ways we can earn money with, with Money Button without uh, charging a transaction fee. Um, so the business model of Money Button is to use Money Button. And I know this is unclear, but you'll, you'll see when we, uh, when we actually do it. Uh, money Button is fully non-custodial. Uh, some people are confused about this. We don't hold your money. Money Button itself is actually a client-side Bitcoin SV wallet. The user has their keys. Uh, this is really important because uh, we aren't a payment processor. We aren't a bank. We're nothing like that. Uh, we, are, we are just an interface for you to, to leverage the power of the blockchain. Okay. So this means this is why we can't block payments, reverse payments, uh, take your money away. We don't even have access to your money. Uh, your wallet is encrypted client side and it's backed up encrypted to our server in a way that we can't access it. Um, okay, so I'm gonna run through a few of the, the use, uh, sort of the, the, the apps and websites that are using Money Button right now. So one of them is nakamotostudies.org. Uh, this is a uh, educational website uh, created by Derek McGill. They're using this to accept uh, payments. Uh, Misha Pelt is, is uh, one of our, our, our sort of top users because she's made some really advanced uses of Money Button. She has several of them on her website, and she's made use of the advanced features like uh, she, uh, she has young daughters, and she actually created uh, websites for her daughters where they will uh, monetize their content, and then actually Misha takes a small percentage of it using the, uh, the multiple outputs. So she'll take of like a 10 cent payment, Misha takes two cents of the 10 cent payment to her daughters. Um, this is a cool app created by uh, Ecliptor. So this is a, actually a WordPress plugin that just someone named Ecliptor made uh, that if you have a WordPress blog, you can easily install uh, you know, uh, uh, Money Button onto a WordPress blog. Uh, Ecliptor also created a really cool app called Shout based on the WordPress plugin, which is a way to monetize a Twitter feed using uh, Money Button. So you can just type in what you want and then swipe money button and post it to that person's Twitter feed. So you can monetize, you could chill basically if, you, if, if that's what you wanted to do. Let people pay you to post whatever they want to your Twitter feed. Um, this is a cool app. So Ecliptor made another one. Uh, this was actually, I think it was originally my idea uh, and Ecliptor actually implemented it. So it's the idea that you could monetize images by showing people a blurry image for free and then they have to pay to see the clear version and you can imagine that there are, there's a world of use cases for something like that. Um, 
Uh, this is another good one, and I'm, I'm really happy with this. So, so J Jason is here. Uh, where's Jason? I saw you right over there. Uh, of memo.cache, and also we learned as of, so memo.cache does support SV, uh, and uh, I think you support both ABC and SV, but you do support SV. And Unwriter, who created this, also announced as of, I think it was just yesterday, like 12 hours ago, that Unwriter is now supporting SV as well. So this app will work. What Memo Button is, it is an integration of uh, Money Button with uh, Unwriter's tools, BitDB, and I, I forget what other ones. Uh, yeah, it's Memo, yeah, BitDB and Memo.cache. It is a way to post things to Memo.cache using Money Button and Memo, uh, 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 Money Button and BitDB. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's a cool way of integrating all these different uh, services together because we all use the same underlying protocol, uh, which is Bitcoin SV. Um, data button is just the tool that Unwriter created to, to do that, which you can access. Uh, Emilio uh, is a, a former engineer of, of our company, created a, uh, a website called Markdown Paywall, similar to yours.org, but basically with money button instead. Uh, uh, there's another one Emilio created where you can actually just write in a script and post it to the blockchain using money button. We have, uh, so Miguel is an engineer at our company. Uh, created foreverdata.com, so you can post whatever uh, data to the blockchain you want to using Money Button. Uh, there's a Dave Foderick created a, 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 a sort of a number of tools for letting people pick uh, donation amounts and whatever. It's just a sort of an advanced wrapper for Money Button that lets you do some advanced things that we don't support around it that you can access. Um, okay, so that's not a comprehensive list. There are a few other apps. Uh, if you want to see other examples, you can go to reddit.com slash r slash money button. Um, we are, one of the things we're working on right now is basically to accumulate better information about this. So we'll have uh, better documentation and better, uh, what, what we call a discovery page will be coming soon, where basically, if you try to use money button right now, you have no idea what websites actually use it. So we're going to show you all the websites so you know where you can find money button. That's a discovery page. In the meantime, we have a, a long list of resources here that you can access to learn more about Money Button and, and adopt, hopefully add it to your website or, or your app. Uh, and the, the primary one is just moneybutton.com. So just go there and you can find links to everything else. Um, brief note, if you do try to use it for any developers in the audience, we haven't solved this problem yet. Many browsers as well as many privacy plugins create problems for Money Button, so be sure to whitelist www.moneybutton.com. Uh, this is a solvable problem, but in some cases, the only way we can solve this is to have you download an app. So we will solve this eventually, but for now, if you have issues, try whitelisting Money Button. Um, okay, so I'm almost uh, over here. Uh, so uh, in a nutshell, uh, we're using Bitcoin SV because it is, in my opinion, clearly the correct choice. Uh, we highly value a stable protocol. Uh, this is exactly what we need. And our interests as a company are actually very aligned with SV because what we want to do with Money Button is we want to get as many people swiping the Money Button every single day as possible. What does that mean? That means lots of transactions on chain. So if Bitcoin SV is going to be scaling up with respect to uh, things like the stress test and trying to get up to really, really large blocks so that we can prove this is possible and then get business adoption, we're an example of a business that will use the hell out of this if we are successful. Our goal is to get as many transactions uh, on chain as possible. I mean, it's just one way of looking at what our business goal is. We want people using Money Button, those are on chain transactions.